So right in front of me, I have two Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Pluses. On the right is the Aura Glow, rocking the Samsung Exynos 9825 chipset. And on the left-hand side is a black Note 10 Plus using the Qualcomm Snapdragon 855. For those of you unfamiliar with Samsung devices, they usually come in two variants, two different chipsets, depending on where you live in the world. Sometimes in Asia and Europe, they'll get the Exynos processor, but here in North America, we typically get the Snap Snapdragon, the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor. To show you guys that I'm telling you the truth, I've loaded up CPU-Z, and as you can see here, on the left-hand side, it's running the Qualcomm processor, and on the right-hand side, it's running the Exynos processor. Now, the first test I did was a battery drain test because the previous generation of the Exynos processor had terrible battery life compared to the Qualcomm chipset. But quite frankly, I am not seeing a difference this year in battery performance. I am getting the exact same battery life on both of these devices. I ran both of these devices for six and a half hours of screen on time, nonstop. I did a bunch of various tests from gaming to watching Netflix to browsing the web, scrolling through social media. I did a bunch of benchmarks. The list goes on. Basically the standard stuff you do day in, day out on your smartphone. And the biggest difference was no difference. At the end of the six and a half hours, there was about two to 3% left on the Qualcomm Snapdragon variant compared to the Exynos variant. Now, when it comes to speed tests, things change a little bit. The first thing I did was run Geekbench. I ran it three times because I think it's important to see how these phones react under continuous load. The first test being the fastest, the Qualcomm variant got a single core speed of 3475 and a multi-core speed of 10,575, whereas the Exynos version had a faster single core speed at 4199 compared to a slower multi-core speed at 96. 80. I ran the tests three times and every time I ran the tests, those scores started to lower because the phone was getting hotter and therefore couldn't keep up with the original score from the beginning. Now the bottom line is that you're going to get better multi-core performance on the Snapdragon variant and you're going to get better single threaded performance on the Exynos variant. But in reality, no one is really going to notice the difference unless you're like consistently rendering a video file or anything that's multi-CPU intensive, you're really not going to notice the difference in terms of speed between both of these devices. The next test I ran was Antutu, and overall the score was higher on Qualcomm. The more I ran the test, the lower the score would go due to it having too much heat and being under load. I actually did a heat test. This was another interesting area, and I found that the Exynos variant of the Note 10 Plus actually ran a little bit hotter, about two to three degrees hotter than the Qualcomm version. So the next test I ran was Androbench, and basically this tests the speeds of the storage on these devices. Now overall, the Qualcomm storage flash drive inside of it was a little bit faster, but I don't think this has anything to do with the chipset. I think this has more to do with where they source their drives from. One manufacturer might be slightly faster than the other, and this becomes luck of the draw. However, things got a little bit weird when I ran the Passmark performance test. Every time I would run it on the Exynos variant, it would stall at the same exact spot when there was this girl with blonde hair and a white background. Sometimes it would work, in fact, it only got it to work two times, but it would take a long time for it to process that image compared to the Qualcomm device. And it's kind of funny because when I was using this device, when I was reviewing it, when I was doing some pretty heavy stuff, I would notice the odd lag or moment of slowdown on the Exynos variant. It didn't happen too often, but it happened. I just felt like the Qualcomm version was consistently faster. And the last thing I wanna mention in terms of speed, I'm finding the modem inside of the Qualcomm variant is better than the Exynos version. I had more bars, I had better reception with the Qualcomm variant compared to the modem that Samsung's using with the Exynos processor. And finally, for the last test, I did a battery charge test. I wanted to see if there was any var variables there. And overall, they charged pretty much at the exact same time. The Qualcomm version finished in about an hour and three minutes and the Exynos version finished charging in about an hour and five to an hour and six minutes. So overall, I'm not seeing that many differences this year compared to previous devices between the Exynos and Qualcomm version. There's a few differences. Overall, I still think the Qualcomm chipset is slightly better, but this year it's not a major deal. And in fact, if you buy this phone and you don't have access to the Qualcomm chipset in your country, I wouldn't sweat it 
because the Exynos version is almost or just as good as the Snapdragon variant. Anyways, that wraps up this little comparison. I hope I answered all your questions. If you have any more, let me know in the comments below. Hit me up on Discord or on Instagram. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.